Good evening and welcome to another edition of News Feed for January 10th, 2000. I'm Michael Samanowitz. For those of you in Ann Arbor viewing us for the first time, thanks for tuning in tonight. WOLV is the University of Michigan's student-run television station and we will be providing you with Ann Arbor's only local source of news live Sunday through Wednesdays on UMTV. And now our top stories tonight. New internet companies promise great deals on textbooks, but do students really go to these sites? And the AOL Time Warner merger. But first, your campus news. The rush every semester for textbooks has sent students on campus searching for new alternatives to the traditional book buying methods. But are they really effective? Danny Steinberger interviewed some students at Shaman Drum earlier today to find out what they thought. Now well into the first week of the new semester, what concerns all students at the University of Michigan is buying books. And of course, all students are trying to get the cheapest books. Now with an aggressive campaign by internet sales such as varsitybooks.com, um, who have tried to get students uh, and promising them great savings up to 40%, students have been starting to shop online. Yet, however, many students have continued to come to the bookstore, wait on lines, and handpick their own books. We're now joined by a student here at Shaman Drum Bookstore in Ann Arbor, um, Krista, who has chosen to come here and uh, buy books. Um, and what we're interested in is why you've chosen to shop here at Shaman Drum as opposed to shopping on the internet. I came here, be oh, I've never shopped on the internet before, so I guess I don't really know what that would be like. I like having the personal contact, though, and being able to get the book immediately and return it immediately if I have a problem. And it seems like the internet would kind of put more distance between me and those processes. Um, do, are you uh, aware of the savings that are being offered by some of the internet sites and does that concern you um, when buying books? Um, yeah, I mean definitely I'd like to save money when buying books. They get expensive, but I, I don't know about this. I haven't done them directly. I haven't seen a ton of advertisements, so I'm not sure exactly how much I'd be saving. And I don't know about shipping and handling either, so I don't know if that would make a difference or not. So. I guess I'm not too informed. Okay. Now online at the Salmon Drum, Drum Bookstore, we're here joined by Jane Tucker, um, a student here at University of Michigan. Um, and we're concerned, we're asking people why they're coming to bookstores as opposed to shopping on the internet um, with an aggressive campaign by different uh, internet sites uh, offering great savings. So um, we're uh, wondering why you're shopping here at Salmon Drum. Well, I guess it's just that it's, it's a, kind of a little more time-consuming to shop on the Internet. Um, I know it saves money, but here I know that all my books are here and I can just get them and get started, and it's not a hassle. Okay. Well, um, that, there comes another reason why uh, students are shopping here, time-consuming. And now here in the bunker of Sham and Drum Bookstore, um, joined by Bob and Carl, the manager and the owner of Sham and Drum. Um, and we're interested in knowing about um, um, what, what attempts you've made to... Uh, combat the, diff uh, the sales and the savings that are being offered by different internet sites. Um, so what have you been trying to do to combat that? Sure, take take it first. Well, I think there are, there are a couple different things. I think um, the philosophy at Shame and Drum has always been um, really to do our business first, you know, I mean, to, to respond to the faculty needs and hopefully to the student needs, you know, uh, on campus. And we've put a few things in place that would touch on the internet stuff, but it was more actually for the student body here, like our website. We did that with, with the hopes of shortening the lines that you all know about outside the store. Um, we really, at this point, haven't been as concerned with the uh, w web orders, or with the, with the internet uh, business as much as, let's say, Michigan Book Sup Supply might be, because we deal with very specific texts rather than those large, you know, uh, chemistry books or math books, the books that uh, would be more likely to be on those sites. Um, it is something we're going to address in the future. At this point, I don't think we really had that much of a con concern about it. Our concern yeah. has been more how to serve the community right. that's in front of us. Essentially, what we're trying to do is a, uh, a bricks and mortar, clicks and mortar store. Uh, also, uh, you know, by having the internet site be open essentially for students uh, 24 hours a day so that people could order their books uh, on the uh, on the the internet whenever they'd like and they and that you don't have to stand in line you can pick up the you know put your order in pick up the books downstairs and essentially our website is a response to the uh, criticism which is rightly deserved about the lines of Shaman Drum at the beginning of the term uh, in terms of discounting that's somewhat of a false issue the uh, vers varsity books is actually being uh, sued by the National Association of College Stores for uh, false advertising uh, the Michigan Daily in September did a uh, price 
comparison uh, with uh, the Barnes and Noble store at the Michigan Union, uh, with Michigan Book and Supply, Ulrich's, and then all the internet sites. And it, they, I think they used a chemistry textbook as an example. And essentially, the uh, uh, the prices were not that much different. In fact, for a number of the internet sites, uh, they were more expensive than Ulrich's, Barnes and Noble, or Michigan Book and Supply were offering. So it's really the idea, the notion of deep discounts is, uh, I think, a false one. At this point, um, uh, Sham and Drum will not uh, be delivering books to uh, students on campus. Um, in the future, do you, uh, do you imagine that you're going to be delivering them so to avoid uh, having students come to Sham and Drum Bookstore at all? We would like very much to be able to do that. I don't want to make any promises that we can't fulfill, <laughs> but uh, we're working on it. And we hope that uh, we launch this website uh, in September, essentially it was, uh, uh, we announced it on September the 1st. We opened for business September the 4th. Uh, we'd like to be able to continue to surprise people uh, in the, uh, uh, pleasantly surprise people in the next, uh, students in the next year. So be, be looking out for what's going to happen. Okay. Well, thank you. I'm reporting from Shatton Brum Drum Bookstore, Donnie Steinmeier, WOLV TV. Thanks, Donnie. Now let's have a look at what's happening across Michigan tonight. The 2000 North American International Auto Show has officially begun in Detroit, displaying new concept cars by Daimler Chrysler, Ford, and General Motors. Daimler Chrysler, Chrysler introduces its fourth generation minivan. Ford unveiled its talking car with a dashboard computer to keep one close, touch in, close in touch with friends and associates. And General Motors displayed five new cars of new futuristic design in order to silence criticism of GM's lack of innovation in automotive design. The Ford Focus and Nissan Xterra received the highest awards announced in Detroit, honored as American Car and Truck of the Year. More extravagant than ever before, this year's auto show reflects automakers' excitement over a record year of profits and sales. And coming up on Newsfeed, your national and international news. Stay tuned. In national news tonight, today became a good day for Philip Morris and other tobacco companies when the United States Supreme Court refused to allow union health funds sue these cigarette producers for illness caused from smoking. The lawsuit argued that the cigarette industry withheld certain information regarding the health effects of smoking, which may have led the union health funds to more strongly discourage smoking to their members. This decision may foreshadow future decisions regarding suits against the smoking industry. However, this may not necessarily mean the end of this issue. While Philip Morris may be gratified, public health is not, and this decision has not set any national precedent. And Vice President Al Gore has stated that final custody over six-year-old Elian Gonzalez should be decided by the United States courts. 
Gore questions the expertise of the Immigration and Naturalization Service to decide the fate of the boy. He feels the courts have the experience in deciding what is best for the child. He would not comment on the subpoena issued Friday for Ilion to testify before a House committee. Gore claims that the boy's father has demonstrators, has demonstrators paid by Fidel Castro chanting outside his window. He would like for the father, Juan Gonzalez, to come to the United States, where Gore says he can speak freely and settle the matter. President Clinton would not comment on Gore's comments or the subpoena. He supports the, he supports the decision to send Gonzalez back to Cuba. And the biggest merger in history was announced with the merger of AOL and Time Warner for $162 billion today. This merger will launch the next internet revolution, said Steve Case, America Online's chairman and chief executive. Case, the Case will be chairman of the new company, and it will be named AOL Time Warner Incorporated. The deal marks a turning point in the media industry, proving the massive power and value that internet companies like AOL have built up over the past several years. AOL will benefit from this merger through Time Warner's media, which includes movies, music, and TV shows, as well as the, th the cable lines through which Time Warner owns. Time Warner has been trying to get into the internet business for the past couple of years. And this deal will be subject to review by the Justice Department in the coming months. And with your international news tonight, Vice President Al Gore has pledged to fight Africa's AIDS crisis. Today, Gore outlined a new U.S. effort to fight the epidemic, he announced that the White House asked Congress for a total of $150 million for vaccine research and prevention programs in the continent. Gore will convene a meeting of business leaders in Africa to start developing those programs. Statistics show an estimated 23.3 million Africans south of the Sahara currently have HIV or AIDS. It is now the leading killer in the sub-Saharan region. Poverty and wars have already taken a heavy toll in the area, and the disease is affecting many of Africa's elite. The loss of so many people threatens the ability of some countries to govern effectively. And we come back, your sports with Emily Mitchell.
Hi, welcome back to Newsfeed. I'm Emily Mitchell. In local sports tonight, despite being riddled with injuries, the men's wrestling team took third place this past weekend in, in the Virginia Duels. They stunted their trip early off with a loss to number 16, Northern Iowa, but soon regained their stature by defeating Virginia Tech 25 to 12. The Wolverines will, be, will host their first match of the season against number 9, Pennsylvania, this Saturday, January 15th at Cliff Keen Arena at 7 p.m. The men's swimming and diving team broke their two-game winning streak this past weekend by losing to Arizona Wildcats, 174 to 126. This loss brings the Wolverines down to a 3-2 record, while boosting the number three Wildcats to an untarnished 4-0 record. Despite the loss, the Wolverines dominated the breaststroke, taking first, second, and third in the 100 meter, and first, second, third, and fourth in the 200 meter. The Wolverines take on the number two, Stanford, this Friday at Canham Natatorium at 6 p.m., followed by another matchup 18 hours later at noon on Saturday. Life was just peachy this past weekend for the women's gymnastics team. The Wolverines, who are ranked number four, took third place at the Super Six Challenge in Georgia last Saturday. Six of the top nine teams in the country were present at this meet. Michigan fell to just two, Georgia and Alabama. Those that they came out on top of were number six, Nebraska, number three, UCLA, and number nine, Florida. This Friday, the Wolverines will be on the road once again, this time heading west to Minnesota to take on the Golden Gophers. Lions, Tigers, and Bears, oh my, Tiger Woods ate up the competition once again. This time, it was the Mercedes playoffs in Maui, Hawaii. Woods and Ernie Els went head-to-head -head at a forced playoff after they both eagled a 663-yard par 5 this past weekend. Woods then sunk a 12-footer and was matched by a sunken 10-footer by Els to start the playoff with a birdie each. Woods then finished it by sinking a 30-footer on a par 4. Tiger Woods is the first player to win five stars in a row on the PGA Tour since Ben Hogan won six in a row on, in 1948. Woods' win might have been contributed to two big, itty-bitty putts missed by Els, a four-foot on the 14th and a six-foot on the 16th. Following his loss to Woods, Els told Reuters, Woods is a legend in the making, if he's not already. Not only is he a great golfer, but a good sport, too. And coming up, on your, coming up, your Ann Arbor weather news, your Ann Arbor weather with Lindy Mendoza and entertainment news. Welcome back to WOLV-TV. I'm Lindsay Mendoza. Let's have a look at your local weather. The temperatures outside are seasonably warmer than expected. That normal high for today is 30 degrees and the low is 16. However, our weather reached a high of 49 degrees and then we were cooled by some thunderstorms. We had a low of 36 with 
0.14 inches of precipitation. For tonight, we can expect lows of 32 degrees with partly cloudy skies. There could be a chance of snow flurries later in the night. Now let's take a look at our Ann Arbor's local forecast. On Tuesday, for tomorrow, you can expect a high of 38 degrees and a low of 32. Wednesday, 38 degrees and a low of 22. Thursday, 35 and 26. There could be some snow showers during these three days. On Friday, it looks like the snow flurries will be out of our way and it should be reach a high of 34. And for Saturday, it looks like it'll be warming up to 43 degrees with a low of 23. That's your local weather. Back to you, Mike. Thanks, Lindsay. Well, last night, Nash Bridges stars Cheech Marine and Don Johnson hosted the 26th annual People's Choice Awards. There was not much surprise in the winners this year. Summer blockbuster The Sixth Sense was the night's big winner, taking the favorite film and dramatic film of 1999. Bruce Willis won a favorite motion picture actor win for his role in the film. In the favorite new comedy category, NBC's Stark Raving Mad beat out Shasta McNasty, Futurama, and Ladies Man. Friends and ER were named favorite TV comedy series and dramatic series, respectively. Other winners included Adam Sandler, Billy Campbell, Jennifer Love Hewitt, Ricky Martin, Shania Twain, and, of course, the Backstreet Boys. Well, thanks for watching another edition of Newsfeed. We'll be back right here tomorrow, 10 o'clock p.m., on Channel 22 UMTV. Thanks for watching, and good night.